Hello, it's Adam again. Hello, I'm Adam. This is an ongoing video series about finding my next favorite tabletop role-playing game, and I am looking at DC20 today. The premise of this video series is I've fallen out of love with games I've played in the past, and I'm looking for something new. And maybe DC20 will be it. DC20 is crowdfunding right now on Kickstarter, and as of the, this recording, they funded in one minute, and they've raised $1.7 million. And there's only four days left to go! There is a playtest document, so you can check it out, and I'm going to be reviewing that. There's not much here besides rules language, which is fine, so I'm just going to dive right in. There are four attributes. These are like ability scores. They are might, agility, intelligence, and charisma. Might affects your health points. Agility, your physical defense. Intelligence, your mystical defense. Charisma, also your myst mystical defense, and also grit points. Get used to me saying the word points. It comes up a lot. And your standard array is 3, 1, 0, and negative 2. And then you have floating two, uh, two more points where you can, wherever you want to put them. So yay, scores and modifiers are not separate, which is one of my criteria I'm looking for. In a big deviation from Pathfinder and D&D 5th edition and games like that, your highest attribute is your prime modifier, regardless of class or anything else. It's what you use to attack, save, cast spells, your sort of general awareness of your area, etc. So what does that mean in terms of the fiction? Well, if you're a barbarian, you could use your strength to power you through. You could use your agility and be a more nimble fighter. You could use your intelligence, which you have to rethink what a barbarian looks like. Or you could use your charisma, the force of your personality, to power your attack. At first, this was a little immersion breaking, but I think that, you know, it's the limits are your imagination, so that's fine with me. Skills work a lot the same way they do in D&D 5th edition. Characters also have a trade, which is kind of part of their backstory. It's what they're good at. Uh, examples might include things that you, you know, professions that use your hands or your, or a particular skill set. In terms of bioessentialism, there are still racial languages, as if all elves speak one unified tongue, or all dwarves, or something like that, which doesn't really jive with what I'm looking for, but it's just one thing. You can also have masteries, so you can master a certain skill, trade, language, or combat. I really liked the way that they looked at languages as having a range of fluency, everywhere from not knowing the language at all, to being able to being able to get by with a die roll to not having to roll at all to communicate with it. And masteries go all the way from novice to grandmaster, which is kind of like a 20th level uh, equivalent in that particular skill or trade or language or, or combat. Mastery usually grants certain bonuses. You've got your same death saves that you have in 5th edition. And generally throughout the game, you see this, that if you beat a difficulty level uh, by 5 or more, you get an extra bonus, uh, and if you fail a difficulty level by five or more, then you get an extra negative outcome. As I said, there are two types of defense. There's physical and mystical, and hit points are equal to six, plus your character level, plus your might, which is one of your four attributes, plus any class modifiers you might have. There are conditions based on how how many hit points you have left they are bloodied well bloodied and on death's door they're kind of like hit point thresholds where certain effects happen even when you're on death's door it's not you don't fall unconscious but you do have a lot of limitations on what you can do when you're on death's door and of course there's this negative number threshold that means like you ac actually die the other big difference between DC20 and perhaps other games is that they use action points. So you get four action points. You can spend them to perform actions, reactions, and also use class features. Uh, there are lots of other points too. There are mana points. There are stamina points. There are grit points in addition to the other things I said. Hit points and so on. Even most reactions require points, which of course if you think about it, allows you to do less on your turn because your actions aren't as available to you. You might have only three if you've used one on a reaction before. Um, and then that might mean, or if you go after, it might mean that you don't have any points left over for reactions in case something happens. I did like seeing that instead of a counter spell spell, there's something called a spell duel, 
which means that you, you know, start to like fling spells at each other instead of just saying, no, you don't cast that spell. And if you have one of these spell contests and you it ends in a tie, then you both roll on a magic surge table, which means magic sort of explodes in an unpredictable way. Overall, I found the game to be very prescriptive. There's an entry for every conceivable action, which makes it very granular. And granularity can sometimes slow down a game, or it might make a player feel like if they don't have a particular ability, then they can't even attempt it, if that makes sense. The classic example is, if you don't have the ability shove, does that mean that you can try to shove someone? Because I can try to shove someone as a person in the real world, but in the game, if I don't have that ability, can I still do that? In terms of initiation, you have an initiation check between two sides, so not everyone rolls just sort of one person for in, for the PCs, and then the DM rolls for every group of antagonists. And you're rolling against DC to see who goes first. Side A starts with the highest initiative check, then side B, side A, and so forth. The actual type of check, so which of your abilities you use, is determined what by what precipitated the battle. If you were sleuthing and discovered the bad guy, then you might roll something uh, like a an intelligence check. Whereas if you were trying to parlay and then the battle erupted, it might be a charisma check instead. Lots of new conditions. Bleeding, burning, doomed, exposed, hindered, impaired, rattled, slowed, and taunted. So a wealth of other conditions, it's almost doubled the number. There are even rest points, which <laughs> I didn't love. But essentially, how many rest points you use determines how restful that rest was. The whole game maxes out at level 10, but if you want to go farther, you can use prestige classes, uh, or prestige paths is what it's called, for further play. And I'm fine with that because I think that it's a rare game that goes from 1 to something past 10. I did like their uh, ancestries. It's actually a lot like An Elf and an Orc Had a Little Baby, which I co-wrote with VJ Harris. Go check that out. Because of the way they designed it, I think that there's very little bioessentialism in the Ancestries, except for the trade expertise feature, which kind of reintroduces it, which is unfortunate. You have all the classes you might expect, except Paladin is gone and Commander has been added in. Commander is sort of a tactician style warrior and that's it for my summary of the rules there was a lot here it's over 100 and it's something like 150 pages so whew. so would dc20 be my next game no <laughs> in short no uh it might be yours go check out the kickstarter if you're interested but it's not for me i have small nitpicks about bioessentialism and rest points but my overall issue is that this is more complicated than D&D 5th Edition. And if you remember from, from some of my earlier videos, I'm looking for something less complicated, more streamlined. This pushes D&D 5th Edition uh, closer to Pathfinder in terms of being very granular, very prescriptive. Everything's fleshed out. Everything's detailed. I actually like that they have action points instead of just, you know, saying you have an action or reaction and perhaps bonus action. And I, of course, love their ancestries because it reminds me so much of Elf and Orc Had a Little Baby. But I didn't really like their initiative, and there's a lot of other nitpicks I have about it, um, but mostly that it's just way too complicated for my tastes. Uh, I'm looking for something less. So... Check it out if it's if it's interesting to you, um, but otherwise I'm going to keep looking for my next favorite tabletop role-playing game.